I remember the first time I saw Priya. It was a picture of her family sitting on a friend's bookshelf. After I asked the girl's name, I confidently twisted her around and without thinking declared to the room, she's my wife, where she at? They all laughed. They thought I was joking. Why was I so immediately smitten? To a young man and his raging hormones, it may have been her beauty. The girl, after all, was stunning. Having been raised as the only Indian in a predominantly white community, perhaps I found her attractive because she looked a little bit like me. Or perhaps, just perhaps, there is something to the notion about love at first sight. There was just one problem. Priya, this beautiful goddess whom I needed to meet, was living at the time with her family in Singapore, halfway around the world. I was a young man in love, so distance didn't matter. Besides, I was raised in America. I'd been taught that I could do anything I put my mind to. First, I finagled her number from her siblings. Then I called her. Unfortunately, she wasn't the one who answered the phone. Her father curtly explained that her family believed in arranged marriage, and he made it clear that I should never call again. I wasn't deterred. I couldn't give up. Besides, I had a secret weapon. I bought, packaged, and mailed Priya the greatest album of love songs known to the modern world, at least in the 1990s. I sent her Air Supply's greatest hits. I've been told the universe smiles on both the confident and the lovelorn, and it must be true because a few months later, Priya's older brother purchased a home through my mother and scheduled a milk boiling. I learned it's a Hindu ceremony that blesses the home and its inhabitants with prosperity, and family from all over attend. It meant Priya would be coming from Singapore and that I had to get myself invited. Did it work out? We've been married 20 years now. It's like I told you, believe in love at first sight.